Hello and welcome to the Fedora Files. I am Gregory Fedora, and I'm really excited about this week's episode. Now, everybody I know of has had cider or some kind of cider, whether it's gone to the grocery store and picked up a cider off the shelf or the more hard ciders that are out there. Now, I always just thought ciders were this sweet, like, sippy type of drink, and it wasn't really my thing. And that was until I went to Willow Oaks and discovered what cider could be. And I'm really excited that they let me come out and sit down and talk with them. And they told me all about their cider and how long they've been doing it. And I think you're going to enjoy it. So sit back and check it out. With me is Lori from Willow Oaks. And thank you for coming on. This well, is Thanks for coming by. This is awesome. The, your views are cool. This is a really neat building. Like, I, I didn't, it's just funny, I, I mean, I haven't lived in Frederick all my life, but, like, when I found out about you guys, I was like, I need to find out more. Well, thanks for and, coming by. Yeah, and I checked out your website and checked out things, and I'm getting to try some of your stuff for the first time, which is going to be super awesome. I'm excited about this. Get to pick out a good one for your wife. Yes. you got to figure out which one she's going to yeah. like. I, 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 well, by the end, I should be able to figure it out, I hope. <laughs> the thing is, i got to figure out which one I like and then be like, okay, but which one will she like? Yes. And then I'll get both. Well, it's interesting uh, because what we what we wanted to do was really allow the fruit to express itself, mm -hmm. allow uh, a, 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 as little as interfere, a little a, as little interference as possible. Mm -hmm. I'm having trouble with my sentence structure, mm -hmm. and um, and just really do all small batch barrel fermentation. We don't sulfite anything to kill the native yeast. So mm -hmm. where it like you have like wine nerds talk about the terroir mm -hmm. of a you know, and we usually talk about that in relationship to wine. But this this is cider is an apple wine, okay. and because we don't. Um, kill the things that part uh, the the flora that's mm. that's on the fruit coming in. You really get a sense of the taste of the place. Oh, very cool. So I was good. So I mean, I read the history of the farm. Like it was the land was granted to the Harley family. And, mm -hmm. So I mean, this is a huge historic mm -hmm. farm. But I and I was talking to your husband earlier, and that you guys were the first organic farm in. In Maryland, yes. for sure, and I believe also he said something about, uh, or was it orchard or winery? Yeah, well, still the it's uh it's the oldest organic orchard in the east. Okay, in the east. Okay. Um, and so we're still uh we're still the only organic orchard in the state. Okay, um, growing tree fruit. Uh, organically is a little tricky, mm -hmm. which is why when when Eric first thought about planting. Uh, planting the land here, which had been all like soybeans and corn and hay mm -hmm. and cows and no no trees, no no fruit, no mm -hmm. anything, and uh, there wasn't any guidance on how to grow something, grow tree fruit organically. Yeah. How do you how do you grow an organic apple? And so uh, he looked at. Uh, American heritage apples, so apples that would have been grown in the colonies mm -hmm. um, before Monsanto was okay. involved in agriculture, yeah. okay. you know, yeah. before you have giant monocropping and things like that. So, um, yeah, so so they've, they've been grown here for a couple hundred years, so mm -hmm. he thought that they might do okay in the heat and humidity yeah. of the East. So, yeah. yeah. So, what what actually made you guys decide to do this? Because this is like, I mean, one, it's a huge undertaking to take over a farm and then and then not only that, but change what the farm was. Like you said, it's like it turn it to an orchard and then you decide to go all organic. So you mm -hmm. like multiply the... Difficulty. Yeah, yeah. What, like, what's our, our motto is uh, work harder, not smarter. Yeah, nice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but the outcome's amazing so far. Like, like well, I just had you all in. That's a real. I really like that. I think right now I'm gonna say that would have to be the one my wife would be into. But well, I gotta I keep, I gotta keep going. You haven't tasted the Bokari going. yet, which yes, means this is... to call. I was trying to figure out what we were trying to decide what to call it, and because we'd originally called it something else, and we got a cease and desist letter from a giant winery conglomerate because oh. we didn't realize that they had 
they had a trademark for that. And yeah. how they found us, I don't know, because we're eensy teensy. Yeah. Right? So. And so I like kept going, like, what am I going to call it? What are we going to call it? What are we going to call it? Because it kind of, we thought initially it was like a Spanish style cider. Yeah. But by the time it aged a little longer in the barrel and then it bottle conditioned, it tasted more like a French cider. Mm -hmm. But it's made with American heritage cider apples. So it was like, what am I going to call? So the, the name that we had before was a, 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 a Spanish name. Mm -hmm. But then wasn't really like a Spanish cider, and we had to call it something else. Yeah. So I'm wandering around, like, what am I going to call it? And we like played with different languages, and vocari just means to call oh. in Latin. So it was really kind of a lazy name yeah. and an all-purpose name. So, but it's not a lazy slander because it, it, it won slander. the silver medal. Yeah, there you go. A couple so. of times. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's very. Uh, Thank you. And we also got a really nice, uh, we had been going to the Silver Spring Farmer's Market for several years. And it mm -hmm. turns out that one of the, uh, the one of our customers is mm -hmm. the wine critic for the Washington Post. Oh, really? So one year before Thanksgiving, he bought like, well, his wife likes gloaming better okay. than Bocari. That's and, my next one. And that's my favorite cider on the planet. And that won a best in class medal and a gold medal in the Governor's Cup. Oh, nice. But um, the the uh, Dave McIntyre really liked the Vocari and re did a nice little write up in the Washington Post right before Thanksgiving. It was oh, very soon. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and so that's what's in my glass. Oh, the the, the gloaming. Mm -hmm. That's that's mm -hmm. what, oh Vocari. Vocari right, because no, I hadn't tasted no. it in a while, so oh. I thought, and so Aggie decided that she'd be helpful to me. Yeah. So well, I got to try the next one now. This mm -hmm. is this is the gloaming. This that's is, gloaming. Yeah. So. I said, so how did you come to this decision to do this? Um, we have a lot of fruit. And when you grow apples in particular in the east, mm -hmm. um, they, there are a lot of fungal diseases that mm -hmm. will attack the tree um, and really just kind of tarnish the fruit. So the fruit is still delicious. Mm -hmm. It's just not utterly perfect visually mm -hmm. you know so you put them in a store next to somebody's like mass-produced waxed yeah red delicious apples and they you know people it's like what's this ugly apple yeah. but the ugly apples are much more delicious yeah. than the other ones <laughs> and they're, they're probably better for you too because I mean, they don't have the chemicals they don't have the like people like don't realize that when you spray the chemicals on the fruit, even if you wash it, it's in the fruit. Like it gets through, like the skin of the fruit can only do so much. That's right. That's and right. I, I know and, that. Yeah. And um, that I am, and now we have a plane going overhead. Um, I have a particular sensitivity to sulfur flavors mm -hmm. and sul sulfur is one of the main fungicides that orchard spray. Mm -hmm. So you have sulfur in the orchard. Okay. And then when people make cider, they usually put, and wine, mm -hmm. they put sulfites in the wine to kill the native yeast. So they have more sulfur, right? Oh, so and then you do the fermentation, then they pitch the yeast and then they have the fermentation and then they have more sulfur. Mm -hmm. And so I'll taste something that has it like as delicate a flavor as, um, as uh, apples do, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it 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 is the thing that it hits my nose and my palate first, mm -hmm. and so we we just decided. And Eric's going to yell over there, this is wonderful. and that's Eric yelling over there. So we're going to hear you have like noise canceling. Yeah. Kind of, there you are like yelling, and then there's a recording thing going on. You're like yelling across the. Hey, come come over and sit down, sir. <laughs> come join us and join us yeah so um so yeah so we had fruit and we mm -hmm. had some imperfect fruit and eric when he was like way back way back in graduate school he'd met a couple of really nice french ciders that he liked mm -hmm. and he thought well we could do that nice there and it just took a really long time to get <laughs> you know so anything that you start you know, especially we both have off farm jobs, and mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, busy doing other things. But that's cool that you had the uh, the thought to go for it. Like oftentimes, like people get the idea 
and then they don't go. It's like, oh, I think I want to try it. Like, I, I'm one of these, I, I like to try things. And when I find out people who have done it and they're actually successful at it, I want to talk to them about it. Like, you guys are doing this. Like, I, I, I love the idea of making wines and different, like, meads and brew, brewing stuff. And I just, I get nervous about doing it because I'm like, crap, I, I know it's not going to be nearly as good as like, like I'm tasting your stuff. I'm like, oh, my stuff's going to be awful. I know. Well, we, we made some awful cider initially. I mean, when we, when we first began, we're, there were a few test batches that mm -hmm. um, initially we thought were promising and then they were not. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... You know, some things just went small batches. They just went down the tubes. Um, but uh, Never to be know. talked of again. No, never to be talked of again. Yeah. Um, and we discovered that we liked the, the natural use from our orchards better than we liked the commercial use. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that because it allows you know, more, since we don't, especially don't spray fungicides when we don't spray, then we get to have the, the pleasure of getting the use. Yeah, because different apples are going to have different yeast mix, especially especially uh, apples with a lot of tannin. Okay. And so it allows our our homesteader series to all taste really different from each other. And that's why we don't get any carbonation either, because we want folks to actually taste the terroir, taste the apple, taste the you know this is probably what those ciders tasted like in colonial America because we're in the same bio same large bio region. The only difference is they're clean now. Hmm. So, so. so what, when you were doing this, like you've done this been doing it for quite a few years now. A few like, years. Yeah. So what uh when did you get to the point that you're like I like it it like hit you that we're really doing this and it's it's taking on and we're doing a good job of it. Like when did that hit you? We, but that still hasn't been. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, we're doing this. Mm -hmm. We're happy with with most of it, not with all of it. Mm -hmm. um, I feel we, we feel like that we feel like we're actually getting better at what we're doing, and uh, we still have a ways to go with some of it. But mm -hmm. I'm, you know, there there are a whole set of them that we're pretty pretty happy with right now, and so we think we think we've got that part down, mm -hmm. and so we're still learning. You know, I the uh, uh, you know I'm, I for example I think the apple port is I'm really happy with the, the apple port style dessert wine, um, and and the the pear's okay, but I'm really happy with the apple. And oh. so, we sell a little bit more of the pear than we do the apple, so they're they're good goes to figure. You know, everybody said, well, you're going to have to make sweet cider, and we said, well, we don't like sweet cider, mm -hmm. and we don't want to put a bunch, a bunch of sulfites in it. Yeah, and so we're we're small, and we'll make the things that we like, and people who like it will no. come. <laughs> and people no, will not. It, um, but we no. made a couple of the ports that you know, so that when people come by yeah. it, who need something sweet, they can yeah. have that. And we and you know, and, and I'm working now to see if I can find a way to uh, to do a good job with something that we have just a just a touch of residual sugar. Mm -hmm. um, we we don't have that. I'd like to have just, just a touch, not enough to be a sweet, not even really a semi-sweet, but just off dry. And I need to check to see if these folks need something. Okay. Uh, you know. okay. I have celiac disease, so mm -hmm. I can't have any gluten, and so the, my my beer consumption. Sadly, I have not been able to partake of any of the. Um, explosion of lovely breweries that everywhere, you know, yeah. that everywhere. I heard yeah. your wonderful interview with Steinhardt, and we have a friend who used to work here who's working at Indium, and I you know, can't drink any of it. But uh -huh. it's nice to have um, something kind of crisp and cold and fizzy that I can mm -hmm. have on a hot day. Yeah. You know? So, so that making our own cider, we have to, we make a hop cider too, which is kind of cool, which is kind of nice. Yeah, I mean, my my wife doesn't enjoy beer at all so she's a cider person oh good so, so good she, have i got a deal for her yeah exactly yeah. exactly yeah so, so i just I, had like, i had your right. apparition what i'm noticing it's really good like you can actually like really like like the, the taste they're all very different like mm -hmm. and you can tell the difference and like which is 
neat like for me when you go to the big name people it's kind of like they all taste the same and especially like in the beer industry like the big name beer industry mm-hmm. they'll say this is an ipa and this is our whatever ipa this ipa this i it's all from the same company and to me it's like it all tastes exactly the same mm-hmm. and then like i said the local breweries they seem to have unique tastes like right. you can tell the difference like and, and same with your ciders like when you go to a big name company that like because they're all kind of doing it now they're trying mm-hmm. to like i think even budweiser has a cider yeah and, and and it's like okay this doesn't taste any different to me than the apple orchard cider or this or that like they all kind of have the same this is cider mm-hmm. and like i said they're probably going to mass crops to get their apples right and, and and so basically most commercial cider what they're using is surplus dessert apples okay right you know so what's the popular apples in the united states the people have been growing because they're pretty mm-hmm. they taste terrible but they're like a red delicious or yeah. a, you know you know fancy apples they've gotten pink ladies or yeah. you know galas or you know yeah. something like that well they're all sweet yeah. Um, and they don't have most apples. So um, the flavor pro- profile of a wine mm-hmm. is you get the balance between the fermentable sugar mm-hmm. and then acids and tannins. And most dessert apples have sugar. Yeah. They don't have any acid or tannin. Yeah. So then you don't have, if you ferment it all the way to, Occasionally, this thing has blown well, over, so right. I was just... I'll <laughs> hold on to it. <laughs> it's like, what are we doing here? Um, uh, uh, so, so if you ferment something all the way dry, mm-hmm. you don't have any flavor left, Ooh. which is why most commercial ciders, they leave the residual sugar because the sweet is basically all, all you have the, the flavors to work with. Okay. Or you can add kiwi lime to it or yeah. strawberry basil or something yeah. like that just kind of like different Sweet, flavor yeah. profiles because you have to you know there's just no there there otherwise yeah. and so we have um because we grow we started as a grower mm-hmm. um uh, there's a we can get a sense of the flavor of things and do a little bit of field field blending before pressing mm-hmm. Um, and then we do all small batch barrel fermentation and then taste through the different mm-hmm. barrels to decide what gets blended together. Like maybe this barrel came out like with a little bit more acid notes, a little bit more of those tangy high notes, but this one is like has is smoother or has more tannins. And so yeah. we might taste them together to see what what gets, gets yeah. what gets together so it's a super fun day yeah to come by when we're tasting through all the barrels no yeah well, I, <laughs> i'd love to do that that'd be fun and, and well also know it's like smaller like like your guys' stuff you guys take kind of risks you try things mm-hmm. and what, like i said some just don't ever get spoken of again mm-hmm. but you're willing to try things whereas the bigger name companies kind of like no this is it this has to sell Right. And, and they aren't going to, they're gonna, not going to deviate. They're like, okay, people want sweet, sweet apples. Right. Like, and and they, they have to, you can turn a cider around in a few months. Uh, basically, you do a fast ferment, crash it to, you know, to kill the yeast, uh, preserve some sugar, put it in a can and get it onto the market. All of our ciders are the better part of two years in the barrel. Oh wow! Um, the Vocari then spends a little longer in mm-hmm. the barrel, and and most people don't do do that mm-hmm. <laughs> because yeah. it takes up some space. Yeah, it's a little bit more effort, and mm-hmm. uh, but we we found that if we if we let it age a bit longer in the barrel, that you get and do a slower, cooler ferment, that you get a broader a range yeah. of flavors. And I didn't want to make anything boring. Mm-hmm. You know, that was just my thing. When Eric first said we were going to make hard cider, I was like, well, cider's boring. You know, yeah. it's like sweet and fizzy. I don't want to do that. And then I had some lovely ciders from, you know, like the Albemarle Cider Works down in Virginia and and some French ciders and um, our, our colleague, um, Oliver, uh, Tom Oliver in, in Great Britain, just making gloriously complex, interesting ciders. Yeah. And I went, oh, okay, it doesn't 
have to be have to be boring. Yeah. Like I can, and and it's not going to be everybody's thing. Yeah, I know? just I just tried your pairing. If that's the ginger one, and you yeah. do take. I'm glad you said to do that one last. Yeah, because now I'm gonna have ginger. You're gonna but, like, <clears> but I like I like ginger, so it's good. But I mean, yeah, but like it would have like tarnished the other flavorings. Well, it just like, kind of make yeah. everything. I mean, it's not it bad just to add, have a yeah. apple ginger. Yeah, cider. yeah it was good. That was really good. That's cool. I and mean, it's and it's not too much because sometimes like ginger can be overpowering, but it's a, it's, it's it's just enough. There's that, still a lot of ginger in there. Yeah, but it's, it's like, it, but it's not it's not it's not oh, like the taste is an overboard. It's like you could still taste the other flavors. The other it's not flavors. just ginger, so which is cool. Like that you guys mix it. Now, the last one I'm going to try is the Harley's tea. This yeah, is. so that's what when you said that sometimes when the batches like don't go don't quite come up to our standards and they're never spoke of again, they do end up getting a second life in that we mm -hmm. can taste through the barrels and say this this cider is just a little thin, mm -hmm. and I don't think the flavors are really what yep. you know what I would be proud to put in a yep. bottle and serve to people, and uh, we pump it into barrels on the truck. We take it off to our friends at McClintock Distilling downtown Frederick. Okay. And they distill it for us. Oh, nice. And so then that's where we bring the distillate home mm -hmm. and we add fermented cider, partially fermented cider, and some and then we age it in the barrels. And then right before we get ready to bottle it, we add some fresh juice to just have a little bit of fruit sweet. Little that bit is, of residual. That's sweetness. really good. And uh, we still don't sulfite that mm -hmm. um, to preserve the sweetness. We just have the alcohol content high enough that um, that the yeast can't live in there. Yeah, so that's fine. So you have you have connections with like McClin I've had McClintock on, and mm -hmm. so and they were a lot of fun. So that's cool that you have you. I'm I'm finding as I've went around to different wineries and different you know distilleries and stuff they all kind of it's like a big extended family it's really and nice. <clears throat> it's not like again it's not like the big name ones where it's a huge competition yeah. it's like everybody's kind of rooting for each other helping each other out where they can and absolutely and like i heard the same things when i was at like when i was at mcclintock and uh then i at puerto rico puerto rico distillery uh they all seem to be connected and mm -hmm. help each other out and, yeah. and go to the same events and root for each other. So it's yeah. really neat that that's out there. Like, yeah. Well, what did they say? A high tide lifts all boats, yes. right? You know, so if, the, if our region gets known for mm -hmm. having really interesting craft beverages, then people come. Yeah. And they're going to want to, and like I encourage people because like I have people who, from Virginia, Pennsylvania, Maryland, but I also have people out west and in Canada and over in Europe that watch our show and I encourage them if they can get over to Frederick to visit all these places because there's so many different like crafts and different like I think Frederick needs to build like a little uh craft uh map like there I know is. but like to, I have not seen that I've oh, seen the Loudoun well, County one well, I have to get one for you yeah I like a... I didn't even know that like I've been just yeah. visiting and finding on my own I've been making my own little trail yeah, there's even there's an app there's even a really? like there's a maryland wine trail app i forget that's maybe not what it's called i should know that yeah um but maryland has a, a complete like it's a whole craft really? beverage map it's all wineries distilleries nice. breweries and a couple little cideries that are on there that's very and cool. then frederick county put out that's their own version of the see, frederick county craft beverage see i needed to know this yeah. Like, see, I know, see, I know, I know Tennessee you and Kentucky start. have it. Like, because I have friends who have done the Tennessee and Kentucky map, and and I've told them to come over here. There's so many, and they're like, well, and they didn't know there was a map of Maryland. I was like, I go, there's so many here. You got to come over here. Mm -hmm. I go, just in my town alone, there's so many. Mm -hmm. I go, you guys wouldn't have to leave my house. You could just, <laughs> I could take you to all the places. I'll be your driver and let you hit them all. I go, because they're all with, like, every, every, from where I live, everything's within 5, 10, 15 minutes. Are you in town? I'm in Middletown. Oh, you're so. in Middletown. Oh, okay. So I'm yeah. just right down the street from you. Yeah. So, cool. but it's, this is fascinating. I, and this looks really good. I definitely, yeah, I gotta, this would be the one for me. 
But I, I'm thinking my wife is like you. She's going to like the gloomy. And if you want to get extra brownie points, yeah. stop and get her some dark chocolate to go okay. with that gloaming. Oh, really? And there'll be swooning happening. Nice. She'll be smiling. Oh, you know, I like that. That's what I need. And the dark chocolate will be nice and make the hardest. Oh, really? Yeah. Do they, uh, do you guys, is there a chocolatier in Frederick that we know? Uh, we've talked to, uh, we've Zoe's. had a, con Zoe's? a conversation with Zoe. Right. They're they're actually uh, up just over the Pennsylvania line, but they're out by themselves. Okay. They have right on Market Street. Okay, and they, used to, to, and they used to be in Frederick proper. Right. And the, the dad, I guess, retired. Kids have a business now. Cool. So and it's fantastic job. Nice. I'll so, I'll have to get so it so I, I can pair it with it. I think eventually that works something out. Nice. It makes some troubles. Had the first well, had the first conversation. Yeah. Keep keep working at that. Yeah, that's yeah. what. Well, there's yeah. always something extra that's on the list. Yeah, and it Definitely. didn't help that um, our uh, our uh, web hosting platform got bought out by a big conglomerate, and mm -hmm. then just basically stopped providing service for people who were on that platform. And our website was down for a couple of months during the peak of the summer. Ah. So it's like, what's going that on? It actually said suspended. And we couldn't get yeah. anything off the website. So we couldn't put up another one. We couldn't retrieve so, anything from it. So it looked like we were closed. Yeah, yeah. So we were like building. You know, it's always yeah. this building a little bit, growing a little bit. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like, what happened there? And yeah, then geez. looked, you know, That's saw right. folks. And ah. so hopefully we'll get. You know, get back to the website's back up a rudimentary one we have it in the works to do a little bit more but you know just kept getting the word out that we're oh no we're here we're, we still exist we're still here and i'm glad and definitely come here it's it's on in middletown on harley road and i'll have a link to excellent. to your website and also the address so people can get here excellent and i have friends that need to come into town and come here excellent and like i said i'm going to take some of this home with me. I've got to buy it as soon as we're done. Thank you for coming on. You got people here and more people are coming, I'm sure. And hopefully even more will show up now. But uh, I appreciate it. And I'm definitely, like I said, I'm going to pick up uh, some of the Harley Keep and the Gloamy to take yeah. home with me because I have to. Because my wife will be mad if there I don't. Yeah, and then well, pick up then, some dark chocolate. Yes. Yeah. And then yeah. you know where we are. Yes, I do. And I, I will be back. I'll bring some people. So. Thank you. But uh, thank you. And those of you who are watching or listening, thank you for tuning in. And remember, to, as always, stay safe and keep searching. The Fedora Files. Check out FedoraCRT.com today.